Hi everybody out there. How's everybody doing? Welcome back to Odin Lawu's Mystic Channel. This is Huga Chris. Hope all is well out there and hopefully you guys are all ready for another lesson today. We're still covering over cards and stuff like that. But we're getting to the point that now where we're going to start breaking our reading down to a point where we can get to where every other people out there and stuff like that, if you're not professional or not, where you can either write down, break down your reading, or you're able to take a mental note of, of it, okay? Whether you break your readings down by co color code, whether you break it down in numerology, whether you break it down using astrology, there's all different ways. And I do minds of a blend of all of those because you cannot not do a reading and not pay attention to the highs and lows of numbers. You cannot not do a reading to pay attention to the color, um, the way of the readings going. All these are little um, facts and stuff like that that goes on when you're doing a reading. Everybody, this is Shupi. This is, oh, this is my papa. Uh, uh, unfortunately, he's scared because he doesn't like the rain and the thunder. So he's shaking like a vibrator machine right here. So he's a part of the um, class today. I'm not going to touch my cards. As you can see, I have my little um, scarf here that Taylor made for me with the seven colors. So I'm pressing against that. I also wanted to make a comment to somebody who happened to visit my channel and left two messages on there. And I hope that that person is tuned into my new lesson today and understands where I'm coming from is from the messages that this individual has left me. If you guys remember from when I first started this whole YouTube thing, it's going on almost two months now. You did remember when I explained to you guys that if there's anything that you would like to know about me, where I come from, what is it that I do, what I specialize in, to visit my website at www.odanlawouge.com. And also to subscribe to my channel at Odin La Rouge Mystic Channel so you can get used to me. You can get used to me from the way I talk, from the way I explain things, from my history, who I am as a voodoo priest, what I've been through to even get to that point where I'm a voodoo priest, the success that I've had over my years of being a voodoo priest. Most of all, the education that I put myself through, dedicated 100% of my time especially within the last past three years. I mean, I just dived into all my education, stuff that I've learned from years ago that I needed to understand how they were broken down in English language. You got to understand with my background being Haitian, American, and Italian, I um, grew up, my grandparents, everybody was Haitian. I grew up in a household where all my aunts and uncles were Haitian. Ever since I was a little boy, I adapted more to my Haitian culture, which wind up making sense as to why I was always attracted to the voodoo culture and stuff like that before I even knew anything about it. So I, I'm very blessed to say that. But this individual, I feel, went a little bit too far as to leave the comment as, as to what the comment was. I work with Ezeli Jewouche which is a sister's Ezeli Danton. I use the statue and the image of the Lama Dama, which the Hispanics um, label as is because it's a black woman. And I that she's a madam. Those who took care of family, those who took care of their husbands, they have everybody, just overall, that great grandmother, that, that ancestor, okay? We use it in Haiti. It could mean cousin. The, the cousin of Kuzen spirit. It's, you can baptize any picture that you want to on whatever name that that spirit relates to you inside the voodoo. Every time you have an image that you like, that you may not see what the traditional one is, as long as you baptize that picture, you give that picture the name, okay, of this particular spirit. You talk to that uh, statue or that image. You let that image know that this is what you're baptizing it on. You could say Saint Sebastian, for example, okay? He's tied to, his saint picture is tied to the tree with the arrows stuck into his um, chest. Okay, I may not see 
that, that saint, that spirit that they call Gumbwa, okay, in the Haitian voodoo culture, as Gumbwa, okay, because I think of Gumbwa is a man, okay, who works with a lot of herbs, a lot of sacred plants, and a lot that produces a lot of what the voodoo entails in, because to be a successful huga and mambo, you need to know about your herbs. You need to know what herbs do this, which herbs do that. You need to have a relationship with that herbal plant world, okay? So that you could know what you need to do, what bath that you need, how to prepare it, and so forth and so on. And also to know how to make an oil from these different herbs and plants. I mean, this is stuff that you need to do, and it doesn't happen overnight. This kind of stuff takes years to know. And the good thing about this is you never finish not knowing. You're always going to have to read, especially when you're catering not only to the Haitian um, clients, but to successfully treat and, and uh, have consultations with any type of person, whatever religious background is, you have to know how to translate your information from Creole to English or from English to Creole. This is very important. It's the same thing with the Hispanics, okay? If you're Haitian and you just have nothing but Spanish botanicas around you, it may be wise for you to either link up with somebody or even go online or whatever and find out what is the Spanish translation from the, Cre from the Creole name and the English name so that you become familiar with what herbs it is that you need. Because other than that, you'd be in trouble, okay? But sometimes, fortunately for us, things are sold, you know, on online botanicas and stuff like that. But you have to pay attention as well to make sure that you're getting the correct herbs and um. Uh, plants and stuff that you need to do your work. It's the same thing with the essential oils and stuff. You have to know what is essential and what is not. Because you got all these different places that's producing all these quote-unquote essential oils and it's just, at the end of it, it's just per per uh, perfume and color that's going inside these bottles. So you need to be aware of those kind of things. Now, if you're a reader that doesn't prescribe these kind of things or you don't know anything about that because you're just interested in reading cards, then that's another um, uh, situation. But this person, out of all things, this is what bothered me. It wasn't the comment that was made. It was how far they took it. Okay? Like I've said before, I want my viewers okay, to subscribe to my channel. I want you to learn from me. I want you to get used to me. I want your opinions. I want your advice. I want to hear if there's anything you're not clear of that you would like for me to repeat for you or whatever to let me know. And then I was very proud of myself yesterday when I got the comment because it wasn't the comment. I was happy this individual even subscribed to my channel out of all things. Okay, is this to go to tell me that I find this picture behind you offensive, offended, okay? And then the person goes around to tell me that I need to go learn my history. Really? Really? I said in every video, especially when I started this a uh, uh, long time ago last month, I said, I'm not going to tolerate no bashing. I'm not going to tolerate any negativity that's being sent on this way. Nothing like that. There's a difference between giving your opinion and then sending somebody to go tell them to go learn their history. Why is that so offensive to you when I've said a hundred times in my videos, when you've seen everything behind me, you've seen Ezeli Jehu, you see Ezeli um, Dota, you see La Madama. And that's the only thing out of everything, all the lesson that I've taught on that particular video, all the charts, everything, that's what you find offensive. And so I said to myself, okay, Chris, are you going to handle this ghetto style or are you going to handle corporate style? Okay, like I said, there's a corporate style and then there's a ghetto side. You're wrong, first of all, 
to tell me to go learn my history. Because everything I do and practice revolves around my history. Okay? I couldn't have gotten this far that I am a huga, a voodoo priest for 18 years for you to tell me to go learn my history. Do you know what these images represent to me? Do you know what Harriet Tubman, Tubman the, mo the woman they call Moses, means to me? Do you know what they call Aunt Caroline? How important is this to me? Because these are strong black women over the decades that died with their cause. Okay? I know what the Lama Dama statue represents for me. I'm sorry if it has offended you. Okay? Because you may not see Ezeli Jewuz or Ezeli Dot or Ezeli Mapyung, Ezeli Balyung. Okay? In that type of image. But that's what it means to me. Okay? You didn't bother me by saying that it was offensive. You bothered me by telling me to go learn my history. I have seven Lama Dama statues in my home alone. And they all have a different job that they deal with me on. Okay? I have one that protects my door, which is 36 inches high. Okay? I have another one. 36 inches high that's in my spiritual altar, in my garage, okay? I got a whole garage for my altar, both Radha and Petu, black and white, okay? Since you took me there, this is where I'm going to go with you. I got in this room alone four Lama Dama statues, okay? I got one next to my head in my bedroom, where do you come off to tell me that I need to go learn my history? If I'm a voodoo priest, okay, huga, that kanzod means initiation three times, I still don't know my history? How do you think that I'm able to sit here and to teach everybody the lessons with the knowledge, okay, that I have after all these years to be able to sit here in my own consultation room in my home, okay? To tell me to go learn my history. If you knew what the Angel Mama that you said represents, you wouldn't have said that to me. Because you would have said, oh, I know why he said that. Because like in all his videos, when he first started coming on YouTube, which evidently you haven't watched, which is what I'd say every time I shut down and every time I open. Please go to all the previous videos so you can catch up to me so you can see what you're working with. Okay? For you to get to know me. You didn't give me that chance. You automatically came and did a summary or conclusion so that you, okay, can feel like you needed something to do. Because if you had something to do better... With your time, you wouldn't have took the time to give that type of um, comment. And I hope that somebody else that subscribed to me or another viewer, when they go down and they see the comments, they put you in their place. They put you in um, your place. Because that comment, the fact that you told me to go learn my history, that wasn't necessary. Because if you took the time to know what these images mean to me, Okay? Nevertheless, my spiritual God that I've been working with for the last past 15 years, that me and her is walking just like this. My Ezeli Jewush, my spiritual guide, you wouldn't have said, oh, why do you have that picture? It's offensive. That's another picture that represents to me Ezeli Jewush, Ezeli Danta, Ezeli Map Young. Okay? But that's the best that you can do and say that that picture right there is offensive. And your mama, you looked and you watched everything that was behind me. Opposed to paying attention to the lesson that I was teaching that day. To look all behind my background and out of all pictures to pick that one and say, 
I feel that's offensive that you have an Angie Mama picture. You, for whatever reason, you feel offended. Okay? It hasn't offended anybody else. Nobody else said anything about my background or nothing. But you came out of whatever sticks that you come from. Because unfortunately, that's somebody who's ignorant would say. So I don't know what, um, what tomb, what stone, what rock, or, or what the type of woods you come from to say that type of comment. But you got me to get to this point. And I didn't want to go there. But I have to let you know, you need to go do your history. Not me. Because let me tell you something, I'm full of knowledge. I'm full with history. And learning more, reading more, is an addiction for me. And it's a healthy one. So like I said, who are you? Who are you? If you don't got nothing good to say, move on. But not only that you said what you said, you have the nerve to subscribe to my channel. So evidently you didn't feel that um, offended. Do me a favor, before anybody else out there who's watching this video, okay, that chooses that they want to pay attention to the stuff that's in my consultation room, opposed to the lesson that I'm trying to teach you guys, just move on. Don't say nothing. I have 22 subscriptions on my YouTube, okay, that I have subscribed to other people's channels. And I never said anything about nobody else negative on their comments in their videos. Why did you feel that it was necessary for you to say something like that? And it wasn't what you said. It was what you said after that to tell me to go learn my history. This is for all the viewers. I'm sorry if anybody's watching this and may feel to say, I can't believe he went there. I can't believe that. But I made myself loud and clear from all the previous videos. I told you what spirits that I work with. I told you what spiritual guide that I have when I'm doing my readings and stuff like that. I've told you. I've conveyed this. There's people that's out there. They don't trust people to say, this is the spirit that I have that works for me. Me? I know what I'm working with. I know what I believe in. So I don't have to be afraid to tell anybody that. Because I knew who they call Ezeli Jewouj, Ezeli Dantra, Ezeli Map Young, Ezeli Kenwa, Mombo Zimalomo, Mombo Kicheche Branke. Okay? You probably didn't even know that. But I do. So evidently, I know my history. Do yourself a favor, unsubscribe to my channel. So that way you don't have to hear me, you don't have to see me, and most of all, you don't have to look behind my room. Because whatever gratification that you got to tell somebody that they need to go learn their history, it's pretty pathetic. Is it my skin color that makes me less of a Haitian? Is it my straight soft hair that makes me less than a Haitian? So the fact that I have my father who's Haitian, that don't mean nothing to you? For you to see that I have the balls to come on YouTube channel to try to recruit people that want to learn, the Haitian Americans that's out there that's struggling on their spiritual path because they don't know how to break things down in English? No, but you took everything else and ran out of it and just to comment on the fact that you see that I have a picture of what you say and your mama in the back. That wasn't necessary. That wasn't necessary for you to tell me to go learn my history. Because you didn't even let me give a chance. Okay? Out of all the 15 videos that I done produced over the last month and a half. Evidently, you didn't go see all the other um, videos. Because if you did... You wouldn't have said what you said. And I'm glad that you said what you said. Because you know what that means for me? That I need to make myself a little bit more clear. To remember that everybody that's viewing my channel. Doesn't have the same opinion that you have. So I say to you. Unsubscribe to my channel. Good luck to you. And have yourself a blessed life. 
and stay off my page. I'm not even going to break this down into Creole because it's going to sound worse. Okay? I'm not even going to go there. And if you are Haitian, like you said you are, you already know what I'm talking about. So I'm not going to go there. Anyway. Okay, hi everybody. How's everybody doing and stuff like that? First of all, let me let you know all that was not to everybody. Okay, you guys are not responsible for anybody else's nonsense. But once again, I've had to go there to get, how could I say that? To give somebody a clarity on what is it that they perceive of what I have in back of me. Regardless of the lesson that I'm teaching. Okay, so we're going to continue. Today I'm going to talk to you again about a little um, numerology. And then I'm going to go into how as a first if you're first learning or if you want to still do this professionally you can is as to how to break down your reading okay whether is it that you do it at the end or whether you are doing it as you go whatever the case may be like i said who got chris is all about choices okay because i know what it feels like for somebody to tell you oh it's only in this that we know this you don't have no other choice i don't like when somebody says that so we're going to go there and I'm going to proceed with the lesson today. And once again, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe so that way you can learn as I go on. You could always, of course, if you subscribe, go back to all the previous videos so you can get caught up with me. That's Odin La Rouge Mystic Channel at YouTube. Feel free to also go to my website so you can get a biography on me. What is it that I do? What it is I specialize in? Uh, fees and other things as far as whatever it is that you need to know. That's at www.audinlarouge.com. Make all the comments that you want. Ask me if there's anything in particular you want me to talk about. Something that you may not be clear on or something that you would like a personal advice on. I won't know unless you email me or leave a message on my video. Okay, so we're going to start off, okay? Let me get my Florida water so I can think. Papa, go down. Go ahead, go down. I have to touch the thing. I'm going to put some hand sanitizer here. And some Florida water because they're not even supposed to really be in this room. But he's scared, so scared of the weather. Okay. Oh, I want, also wanted to tell you guys, too, that I've had this book. Oh, my God. I used to have an original one. It was just a mess. But, you know, thanks to Miss Cat, Cat, Catherine, Catherine Yaron Wode, she has a lot of books out. She really has it. And she is very good. She's very knowledgeable. She's very uh, precise. She, she makes herself loud and clear in her books. I really, really like that family over there at the Lucky Mojo. It's very interesting. And I like to compare sometimes the, you know, the traditional way that the African-American does their um, practice. And I like to come sometimes see how we may relate to it in the Haitian um, voodoo way. But this book right here is really good with astral, zodiac, numerology. It breaks down everything you need to know. And then it's this book is nineteen ten. It was it was it says nineteen ten Washington Boulevard, but it also say that it it um the notes and stuff like that. It's been since wow the first issue was January twenty third eighteen ninety three. That's how old this information is, and it's great. It'll tell you about the numbers. I got my notes that I've had on here for the last past two years. On it or things that stood out to me things that I thought that was important for me to know and also things for me to add on as as a spiritual um, advisor and a spiritual priest for me to have that type of knowledge so that way I can put it to and uh, use it to whatever client it is that I have that's why I said that there's so much knowledge out there there's so much things that we can do better with our time 
opposed to looking at things that has nothing to do with you. Opposed to the lesson that's being teached. Okay? I've been doing this for 18 years now. 18. That's before I even got my asshole. Okay? So, I, 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 just, I'm thinking, I just get confused sometimes with the things that people say. But it's not everybody else's fault for one person. So, anyway. But this gives... I took these notes a couple of years ago and I broke it down to what I needed to relate to, which is what I wanted to brush you guys up on really quick. And it just, oh my God, it has everything in it. It's so much. So I'm just going to brush through it real quick because I already did numerology with you guys, but I just want to show you how you would break it down if you use numerology with it, okay? What I did was I, I typed this up in a uh, word. So that, you know, if I wanted to break down a reading while I was reading with a client, um, whatever it is, if it was for the new people out there that's watching this, or if you already know and you just wanted to figure out how can you break down a reading, you can use this as well. What I put here is the, the client's name. I'm pretty sure you guys can see it if you blow it up on your screen. But what I did was I put the client's name, the date of the reading, and then I put how many H, question, how many D, question, how many S, question, how many C's, question. That's for heart, diamond, spades, and clubs, okay? Then if you break yours down as well to how many reds to blacks, you could put that down as well. How many combos, especially combos that's important, that sticks out in the reading, okay? How many, what's the highest number on the table to the lowest, okay? First of all, always make sure that your people cards, which is your court cards, always represent someone in the client's life. And if they say that they have no relations to the people that are popping up in the cards and stuff like that, make sure you look around to see where this person might be that's a part of this client's life, okay? If it's not their family, if it's not their friends, it also could be their ancestors. But once you start breaking down who these people are, they, they should know. Now, if they don't know these people and they have these cards coming up, these are taking on the intuition, the outlook, the messages to the client that they need to be aware of. You can see a, a lot of court cards that are women for a man. And he may tell you that he's not involved with women, you know, on a, um, in his personal life or whatever. And if he tells you he doesn't associate himself with other women that have fits this description, then this may be the way his outlook towards his situation or his life is at the moment. You see what I'm saying? Because sometimes we may not know who these people are, but this is the way we feel, okay, about what's being um, discussed or what's going on in my per our personal lives. Uh, as, far, as far as for the mans, the men, they can represent the outlook or the stability or the strength in what it is that they're dealing with in their life at that time. And then the, the number that's associated with the kings is number 13, okay? which is uh, the king is all full of stability, okay? And you want to see how it goes back to what you talk about, foundations, making yourself stable, and, and planting roots wherever you are. One plus three is four. Four is the number of stability. Four is the number of foundation. Four is the number of your each corner in your home. Four is professional business buildings. Four is your transportation, okay? There's a lot of stuff that once you break it down, it makes sense when you're using numbers in your reading, okay? So let's say, for instance, the 13, that's one plus three is four. What about the queen, okay? Hers is 12, okay? Now, if the 12, if the woman doesn't represent any of these person that they know a woman, then this is that person's view. This is their intuition that's speaking to them. About this is the way they're looking or approaching either certain situations that's happening to them around their life, or is it that person is intuition 
the wisdom, that caretaker that women possess, especially talking about centuries and stuff like that ago. But if you do, you go one plus two is three, then you're going to get three. Not only that, it's a spiritual number, but it's the number of the Holy Trinity, okay? And then you need a man and a woman to produce a child. That's what women do. They produce. They're very intuitive. They really cap themselves into their, into their soul to deal with a lot of the issues that they do deal with. So, you see, you, you go back over the time and then you see how numerology plays a big part in, in your readings, whether you see it or not. And I hope that you guys took the advice that I gave y'all before and getting yourself a numerology chart, getting yourself an astrology chart. I told you guys where you can get them from online or Pinterest. Whatever it is, just make yourself available to these things because they are out there. The more you know, especially in your divination, the more you're going to be able to help, help your clients that come to you, help your family that come to you, help your friends that come to you. It'll give them a more clear, you know, summary, a result from their readings. Now, if you don't use uh, numerology to break down your readings or you pay attention to highs and lows and then your readings come out fine, that's great because there's every way you can approach your consultations because everybody does it different. But I'm going to tell you what, you can have three different readers, right, read their cards a certain way. But when they break their readings down and stuff like that and they wind up having that same energy, that same summary the foundation, the influences out of the readings, you're going to see a connection. No matter which way they took the cards, you're still going to figure out if this person's coming to see about their financial situation, their love situation, their family, their careers, their business. The influence, the tone of the reading is going to be the same. Okay? I also put here is that what messages, what influences that speaks with these court cards to the client. Like for instance, jacks are our um, messengers. They're a messenger in each department, in the spades, the diamonds, the hearts, the club. They each bring a different message, okay? If these people are not any people that they know, okay? Or it can be somebody that just came to tell the client or the family member that I need you to say, okay, um, they call you and they tell you, oh, I want to tell you what happened to so-and-so. And, you know, he's feeling kind of bummed out. He's so emotional. He's so, you know, distraught or whatever. You're going to know either that jack of spades that brings that news or the jack of heart. It all falls down to one thing once you start identifying this. And it's going to take some time. Just like I said in the other videos, it's going to take time. But if you keep on doing it day after day, hour after hour, or whenever you get that free time to commit to learning this, you're going to see exactly what I was talking about. So if you can too, you can go online as well and get this book from Olenny H. Richmond. Okay? Get it. Get other books on astrology or go online and, and read about astrologies from everybody else's perspective. And you will see how your readings come out a little bit more clear or how you see that you can take your readings to another level. Okay? So put that right here right now. And then I wanted to tell you guys that plus I wanted to tell you guys as well as I don't know if you guys studied the chart that I told you guys about, um, what happens when two spades fall on each other, what happens when a heart uh, falls on a spade, what happens when a heart falls with a club. That's another thing that's important too, okay? It's really important that you know the background of it, not necessarily the way it goes, okay? What spread that you comfortable using, okay? Which way it is that you break your readings down to, and see, the thing is, is that whenever I'm thinking about something that relates to this or how much time I put into my study and stuff like that, I take care of the notes. 
you have to. You have to um, put these in these little plastic things and stuff like that to protect them because, as, of course, as you know, over time, paper, teams, uh, paper tends to draw up. So the more you care for your notes, the more that you put them in a binder or your, your journal, whatever it is that you do, it's going to speak volumes for you, especially over the years when you have to go back and go for references or something comes in your mind and you say, let me see if I learned that or what, what do I need to take notes on, okay? So that does that. So this was the one with the a heart plus the club, which means good times, helping out or helping someone out. You know, that you put the H to the C, and of course, it's the red to the black. And then you do the club plus the heart, which is the black to the red. And you see it says good times, happening, feelings, and stuff like that. Now, these are going to come into handy. You're going to see what I'm talking about when you're doing your cards and they're falling on top of each other or they're falling to the side. However way, which spread you do, you're going to see how you come out. You're going to be able to identify where is these certain situations happening with this person in the reading? Is it happening at their home? Is it happening with their flow of cash? Is it happening at their place of business or their job? Is it uh, the way they feel about the situation emotionally? So this is what you're going to be able to know out of doing this if you don't already do that. Okay, so that's why I gave you guys this, the H plus the C, the C plus the H. And of course, if you are subscribed to my channel or you are following along with me, you're going to have this chart written out because that means you paid attention to the other videos. Okay, then the, the spreads is also what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Spreads are the way you set up your reading. Okay, spreads is when you... Give me a minute, guys. I don't know why I'm so hot like this. Give me a minute. Okay. I'm sorry about that guy. This room's hot. Okay. Um, um, it also tells you the spread is what you set up your cards with in order to give you a flow of your reading, how you set up your cards, okay? Because the fact of the matter is, is you got to be able to know if you're talking about something that happened with the client in their past. You have to figure out if this is something that's going on in their present time. You got to figure out if there's something that the person is going to come in contact with or it has something to do with the next month or the further in the years. Whatever the case may be, me, myself, I don't like to say future because in the future, you're kind of guaranteeing something to somebody because every per everybody's perception, perception of the future is different. I personally feel that you could do a reading for somebody that you're telling them that this is going to happen to them and either it happens quicker or it doesn't come, okay? Because whatever that person's situation is at the time in that future, okay? So you got to make sure that you're very clear with your clients to tell them, look, I see, okay, that this is what's going to happen within the next year or with the next couple of months or whatever. And that way they'll be able to reference back and say, you know what? He did tell me that, or you know what? She did tell me that. But in order for you to be able to do that, you got to be able to see what order, where is it that this is happening for the person in the future. Also, everybody has their different styles. Some people like to read vertically, vertical. Some people like to read horizontal. Me, myself, I like to do it like a, fit, a, a, a blinds, okay? Which is um, vertical because... It's also easier for me as well, too, for me to be able to uh, have that color code and the combos for, once again, like I say, heart to club, club to heart, club to the, all of that. It, it all depends on how you do yours. Some people like three rows. Some people may like four rows. Some people, you know, first of all, another thing is, too, is if you're just starting out as well, or maybe even if you're experienced, but when you see a bunch of cards on the table, you get overwhelmed, 
that's probably because you're putting too much cards all at one time for you. That if you're a person that reads and then you go two cards and then you put another one and then you put another one, that may be easier for you. It's all about preference. It's all about choice, okay? So that's another thing that's important to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give you a couple of spreads just to see how I, I do the reading or if you may like the way, you know, that I do it or I broke it down for you, okay? There's one that they call it the Romani spread. I really like that one. Not only that it just uses 21 cards as your layout, but it gives you exactly where to focus on. If it, is it the past? Is it the present? Is it the future? And if you do read it horizontal and then you read it vertically, each vertical has only three cards in the row. Okay? So you either t you're able to label it. Okay? Meaning like the person at the moment. The person that needs to um, help them. The person that is having issues at their home. The person that's having issues at the job. The person that's having the issues in their marriage. You could break it up any way you want to, okay? Because here, what I have is, I've wrote, okay, you could read up and down or across, okay? You could put it back to back, or you could put it front to front. What I did was here is, it says column one. So it would be like this, okay? Hopefully you got your cards out. Hopefully you already know how I start out. You got your little white candle. If you are doing it at your home or you're studying and you're able to light it up. If you're not looking at um, the video at a time where you're learning it, you're always welcome to go back to it. But I also tell you to um, set up the way you, you, um, you see me set up with the client, with the candle so you can be in that bubble with your spirit or your spiritual guide. So I'm going to give you a quick um, spread. I'm going to give you a couple, and then you'll see the ones I use. These are the ones I prefer. I know maybe you guys say, oh, wait a minute, I know those cards, or I know where you get them from. I love these cards because I'm able to write on them with my signature in the back of them. And I all they also easy as well too to make that um identity identify whether it's reverse or up. So that's another thing that's easy about it as well. We all have our preferences. I got at least 50 of these. I, I'm well stacked up on the cards. You know what I'm saying? Because I use them in all different things that I'm doing. And I only use playing cards but I have a tarot deck as well. You see what I'm saying? But I prefer to do it with the cross because that's what my spiritual guide uses. She uses spirit um, divination with playing cards. So, okay. So, of course, if you already know, you cut your cards. Okay. I usually say a prayer, shake my bell when I'm doing it. And then I tell the client to restack it from left to right again. And then, okay. The way I do it, I do it vertically. Okay, what I do is right there, that tells me, okay, the, what, what is happening at the moment? This is my focus, okay? As you notice, I haven't taken out like the card that represents the client because I don't have a client here. You see what I'm saying? But I don't even take the person out of the bunch either. I try to figure out where that client is at the present time. Are they focused on what happened before? Are they interested in only what happens now and then in the future? So it all depends on what's happening. This is what I mean when I say fall on top of each other. Okay? So right there, that's the six of diamonds, six of club, six of club. That lets me know that because the six of club for me lets me know that there's success in the business, this clarifies it as well. Okay? So this business is doing good. Okay, it's not negative, but are they focused on a marriage that they may be questioning or if this is what happened before with them in their first marriage? Because this card right here means for me that there's a problem in somebody's second marriage. This person was divorced. But let's just say, for instance, that's not the case. 
okay? This would just let me know that the business at the time, it's producing, it's producing, producing cash, okay? So the flow is good. Not only that, I'm going to look at it. It's black to red. Okay, so let's we as we do it with color code, if we do black to red, then we're going to know that it may start off weak, but it's going great. Okay, and that's only with just two cards. You see, I just broke it down. I broke it down meaning. I broke it down with the action in the cards, the color code. Okay, this is the, the, the action right here. That's my club. Okay, so this lets me know that this is what the business, okay, that's get that's in success in mode at the moment. Okay. Also, club to diamond. It shows working hard for the person's m income, their money. Okay. Because remember, the club is the action that's in the situation, and this is the benefit. Okay, of the cash flow. Okay. So, I'm not doing a, a reading here. I'm just letting you see how you can how I lay out the cards and how you can lay them out. Okay, so now that's, I do seven down, okay, seven down. So when I space them out like that, I'm able to see if they're reverse or if they're up. Okay, so that's only one club right there over here. So I can cover it. If I wanted to, I could have went up like this a little bit more and just let the two stick out. But right now, this is eight of spades and it's up. It's not reverse because the five spades, the arrows, it's going up, okay, and it's five. Now, if it was reversed, it would be three down right here. So I would know that this is a reverse eight of spades, okay? So that's how you're able to know. If you, if you don't want to do it like that because you think it's too much that you got to pay attention, then you can always mark it in the corner. Because I'm going to tell you, for diamonds sometimes, well, most of the time, you have to make a little mark if you use reverse and upright. Because how are you going to be able to tell the difference in the diamonds? Okay, because they're all shaped in a diamond. So that's how you're able to know. So it's not like the clubs or the hearts or the spades where you can see exactly what's greater than less than. So greater is when it's up, which is five is closer to eight, opposed to three closer to eight. You see, so all these things are involved in it. Okay, I did my five, this up, okay, I can cover it. You see what I'm saying? So I know that it's eight, and then here goes two, that's two a diamond. I had to make a mark, a little mark right there, so I can know if it's talking about the good side of the two of diamonds or the bad side of the two of diamonds. So there you go, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is another one too that you're going to have to make a, a mark on, the fours. The fours, because it only has four of hearts, four of spades, four of club, you need to be able to figure out which way is up, which way is down, if you use that method. Some people, they use their cards to be able to define the next one, whether it's red or black, whether it's up or down. That's another preference, that's another choice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's ace of club. Ace of clubs, you don't have to mark them except for the diamond because the club, it could have been like this, like that. Okay, so that means it's reverse. You see what I'm saying? So if it was like this, that means I know it's up, which this, this two right here lets me know that biz, business-wise or uh, income-wise or financially, the action that the, this ace of club is producing, that it's something that is either the home, the business is at the home or they need either some capital, which is funds or whatever, to be able to do something in the home. Whether it is that they're waiting for a contract, if the house is being refinished, or if they're in the process of even getting a house. Because the four of heart two can mean, can mean a move. Okay? So that's this is my present right here. Okay? I could either do my present right here, or I could have started off with past. But I like to do the present situation, and then let me see how the past influences the present. Okay? And then my present is going to influence my future. So I'm able to keep a flow, and then to get to know my client at the same time. Okay? There goes the Ace of Diamond. Hopefully, I hope you guys can see this.
because on my screen it shows me half but when you blow it up in the th in the TV it looks like it's okay you see oh twos as well too it's hard to differentiate too so but since my two is right there I can put it close but if you don't know what how many of the the spades or the clubs and stuff like that you can't put it too close unless you got your dot now see let's just say for instance if I was doing a reading for somebody and stuff like that what's happening around this lady right now she's having some this uh time she's having some separation at the moment whether it's financially okay because of the ace of diamond remember that's the crown okay is she losing funds because her job right now is not even giving her enough hours or whatever the case may be? Or does she feel like a prisoner in her own home? Like what is going on with her? Because the heart of the lady, that's an emotional person. That's a cancer for me. Okay? That's a mother. That's an older lady above 35 years old. What's happening in her house? Now, my fourth spade is either meddling, drama, whatever the case would be. But I also use my four cards as my buildings as well. So my four spade can be the hospital or jail. Okay? So it all depends on what's happening. So right then and there, I can see that this she's going through something. And on top of her is her finances. Where's her material money at? What's going on with her financial situation where where is she at the end the beginning is she waiting for an application to go through what's going on that's gonna tell me right there also it's two spades on the sh on the sh in the in between a heart so right there that tells me either also some personal harm or does she need to heal about something that she's either going through physically or emotionally because remember what I taught you guys, I said spade and spade is physical harm or possibly healing needs to be done. Okay, so spade plus heart gives you what? Heart plus spade gives you what? You see what I'm saying? That's how you know. Now see, this is it. This lady is, is not doing good. Okay, so evidently in her past, that's because it, she's in this row. This is what may be affecting her at the present moment. Or this is what may have happened to her, which puts her in the position that she's in right now. Because it's too much spades here. Okay? It's dark. But she's in the middle of all that darkness. And see, when I do my readings like this, I do vertical like that. I take it as this. What crowns her? Okay? What's in front of her? What's underneath her, which I call walking, okay, or what's in front of her. Everybody got their own way that they give their reading out. You see what I'm saying? As long as you give a clear and precise reading, then you're fine. Don't change anything. See, that lets me know that right here that my seven of spades was reversed because you only got the two looking up. Okay, so that means two is not closer to seven, but five is closer to seven. You see what I'm saying? So like this, it's, it's reversed. The three of club right here, you'd be able to tell with that. This is upright. Okay, so right now, I'm going to tell you, I could just look at that right now and say, just because this crowned that one, that they need to do something about what's going on at this point. Okay, oh, they needed to do something about what's going on because the need to do about is the action of the club. Okay, and what they need to take care of, okay, to do something about their mental state at the moment or what's going on with them that's causing for them to have these spades around them. That's why I was telling you how important it is to be able to say, what is diamond with a spade? Because what you're going to do when you see that, you're going to kind of know where and why this is like that. This is like that. that that's what I'm saying. It's gonna, you're going to see it's going to fall down for you. So that's two, four, six, and then seven. See, I have an eight of hearts, okay? And then it's not um, eight of hearts upright. It's reversed because two is not closer to eight. 
5 is closer to 8. Okay? Now, if you want to, okay, you can. Sometimes when you get to these two rows and stuff like that, and the person's communicating back and forth with you, they're able to um, tell you as well what may have happened once you're telling them what, they, what you see or what is it that you're hearing. They're going to start giving you that clar uh, clarity to them. That's going to start making you understand and them understand why and where and when this was going on. Okay, and then this row right here, the, the future is going to be able to tell me at that point what prescription, if needed, if the person is even interested, what it is that they need to do so that they can move forward in the future or what is it that they need. As far as, is it a bath, is it a candle, is it a lamp, is it a one guy bag, which they call in um, New Orleans a little mojo. What is it that they need to help them from this, this, this destruction right here, especially the way this, the past was. Now, my past, when I say past, that's anything that happened before that client walked through my door, okay, because I don't know them. So I need to be able to see... Usually my first spread like this is who am I dealing with? Am I dealing with somebody that takes responsibility for their action? Am I dealing with somebody that says everything is um, the person's fault? Everything. I'm going to be able to know. I'm going to be able to know not even what they're telling me, the way they're sitting, the way they're paying attention to what it is that I'm telling to. Are they focused? Are they aware? Are they distraught? All of this plays a role in your consultation. It's the same thing when the doc, you go to the doctor. He has to pick up on all of that too to see does he need you to, to send you to a specialty, a specialist, somebody that works with cancer, whatever the case may be. It's also the same thing with an attorney. The attorney is sitting with you in the consultation. You're telling this attorney, this is what happened, this is how it happened, and here's the letters and all that. Are you guilty or not? You see, so all of that comes into this. So why can't it be the same thing just because we're using cards? You know what I'm saying? This is the way we communicate with not only the other side, but with our spirit. What is Jehu's telling me? Okay, because this is Jehu's card. This is her talking, letting me know what's going on. Okay, here we go. This is another one, the five. It's upside down because three is close to the five opposed to two. So that's um, reverse. Oh, no, it was like this. Yep, it's reverse. So, hmm, okay, so this lady, let's just say, for instance, I was reading, okay? First, diamond to heart, heart to spade, okay? So diamond to heart, this person, she has some, she's doing some type of attraction, okay? to her finance, but she either has some, a decision that she needs to make, okay, about this new business opportunity or the opportunity that she's seeking or that she is having to be able to know if she needs something to do um, financially. Is it something that she needs to get some kind of... Uh, this, uh, what decision she has to make about a new uh, uh, opportunity that she's working on or what does she need to do financially for her to get where she needs to get to. Now, the fact that she's hard for her to make a decision, what if this is somebody, usually the, the queen of spades is usually a divorced woman or a widow or somebody that's very can be very cold, deceptive. Um, she's also my, um, my Libra. Okay, so there goes where the Zodiac would come into. Also, number 12. You see what I'm saying? So I got to be able to make sure I know who this is. Now, what if we're doing where we need to identify or she needs to do something spiritually with one of the spirits or something like that? I know that right there. That's Ejli Jehouj, okay? Or Marinette, okay? Or, um, you know what I'm saying? On daughter. You know what I'm saying? What is happening in that woman's spiritual um, court? Okay? So, that's like I said, that's all if, if you focus on what the reading is about. 
So I got my present and I understood my past to how the person got to the present. Now I'm seeing what we could do for her or what is it that she needs to do to be able to go on. This is how you know. Notice how I haven't broke down the reading yet. Because all I'm doing right now is I'm showing you a spread and I'm showing you how you get your story pattern to start making your conclusions. Even if you do two cards at a time, then you do again two cards at a time, then you do again two cards at a time. But you have to make sure you're connecting the puzzle and doing the story at the same time. Okay? So here we go now. Now, this is... A, uh, reverse because four is not closer to nine five is closer to nine so you see right here not only that she had a, she was thinking about what she needed to do how to go for it but not only that it's hard for her to come to a decision she's using sleep um from it or she's becoming restless or she she keeps thinking but it's making her depressed she has a lot of anxiety about what it is that she needs to make a decision about okay so now if she says, Chris, you know, that I just don't know, I don't know. I would say to her at that point, why don't you let me light a white candle for you, okay? So that you could get some clarity as to what you need to do. Pull your heart and your intentions into that candle for it to be able to communicate to you, okay? If she says no, and she says she don't like answers like that, you can even ask her, do you want to light one up for her here? And then you start asking her how she's been feeling, how she's doing. It's all up to how you break down your reading and what prescription that it is that you give to your client. Okay. Now, the ace of spade. Spade plus spade. Remember, plus spade plus spade is serious trouble. Even harm is involved. Does this lady take some type of substance either for the depression or is she taking it to numb herself? Does she use a lot of alcohol? Excuse me. Does she drink alcohol? Is she, has she been to the doctor yet? Because you just don't like how these spades are coming up back to back. Now, if you see the past, she has all these spades as well. And then you see how this present one is okay. And then how we go back here to go to the spades. Evidently, she didn't get clarity or she didn't know what she had to do from here that's affecting her right here. Okay? So this is just saying anything, like I said, before that client walked through this door. So now, when I go jump to the future, I have to tell her what it is that I think that she needs to do. Whether it's work that I have to do, whether it's a bath, whether it's a candle, and if she wants to do that, okay? She may say, I don't work with that, I don't do it. Okay, so you need to tell her. Then if you don't and you're not aware or you're not interested or whatever, I suggest that you go get a checkup, okay, from the doctor because I'm not liking these spades that's coming up. Now, is it the spade because it's not pointing up? It may not have an effect that's connecting to her. Okay, so maybe she already did. Okay, maybe she already did go. And she is not feeling well. She doesn't know what's going on. And she needs to continue to make that healing process. Because as you can see, she almost started off good if you're doing color code. She started off good and then she got worse. So like I said, it's all how you break the reading down, okay? And we didn't even do numbers yet. We didn't even do our counting. We didn't even do our reds to the blacks. We didn't even do how much clubs. We didn't even do how much heart spades, you see? And, and do you see the information that you see that is being revealed for the client just based on the way your cards are falling on top of each other? Now, when I'm done like this with the vertically, if I was doing it horizontally, would I get the same outcome or would I describe it the same way? It's all about what you're comfortable doing. You see, this is a couple here that's going through this stuff. It's not just her. It's also her husband. If that's not her husband, that's her brother. 
okay? Somebody that she's related to because it's the same sign, okay? So if you got the hearts, you got the jack of heart, jack, uh, queen of heart, uh, uh, king of heart, that's a family right there. That's child, mother, and father. So these two spades right here lets me know that this is a couple, okay, that's going through this. And they're not doing well. Now this changes the whole situation right here. This is what they're going through each other, okay? This is what she got, okay, over her head, and this is what he got over his head. But when you connect it and you give the story, you're going to see how involved they are with, within their marriage or the relationship or with the, uh, the circumstances that they got with her. Because remember, on top of her head, she's worried about her financial situation. She's, she's trying to figure out what is it that she wants to do. What is it that she's thinking about for her to be able to go on? You see what I'm saying? What is her problem? What is she having the difficulty with coming up with a decision? Because that's what the five right here represents. If it was like this up, then I would have known that up there's some jealousy going around around her or something. Is she the one that's being jealous? or but it, No, because it's not that way. It's reversed. And for me, reverse, that lets me know she's having a tough time making a decision. Okay, so we got two, four, six, okay, and seven. You see? You see how that three of heart comes under him and then that five of heart is above her? They're doing something together, okay, that's connected to them emotionally because of the heart that crowns her, that's above her, and then this crown that's under him. And both of these cards right here deal with conversation, okay? Decision making. And then not only that, the three is upside down. So that lets me know that they've been having an argument. They're arguing amongst each other. Either he's being too um, hard, too direct, he's hurting her feelings about what's going on, or he needs to just calm down a little bit. And, and just be a little bit more um, considerate when he's talking. Because the three of heart for me, it talks about love. It talks about compassion. It talks about, mm, I love you. Did I tell you how much I've been thinking about you today? And then love talk, you know, intimacy. But now because it's reversed, he's not doing that. He's acting real cold. He's not taking her feelings into consideration. Also, remember... Spade to spade to spades to heart. Spades to heart means what? You see that? You got to do that. It means some type of physical or emotional healing. In this case, because my heart tells me about emotional feelings, taking things into consideration, it all makes sense to me now. But this is what is going to happen if they don't remedy the situation. Okay, so now... She said, she, she, she hears what I'm doing. I did the reading for her. Now I'm going to tell her how I feel about it. And I'm going to tell her, is, would she be interested in me doing a little clarity work for them? Is she interested in me of, of, of clearing her of these obstacles for her to be able to get a decision is what it is that she wants? What is her outlook on this? Okay. Then... Since I already did this, because now I know my client. I know her now. I know what's going on with her. So now the next spread, I'm not going to say past, present, future, because I already know who I'm dealing with. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what it is I need to do for her, especially if she says, Chris, I need your help. I, I, I'm confused. I, I'm so depressed. I'm Okay, let's see what's, what you got going on here, okay? So I'm going to take my cards. Excuse me. My throat is scratchy. Okay. So now I'm going to take my cards. And now I'm going to reshuffle them again. Okay. Because now I just need to know if I say to myself, Chris, does she need a bath? Chris, does she need an obstacle, a, a, a blockbuster candle? Is that going to be strong enough? If it's not strong enough, then do you need to put up a lamp? Okay, what type of lamp? What's going to work best in the situation? Also, you don't ever want to go and do a 
big work up first. Sometimes you need to start off small and see what results come up. Then if you see that you that she's not getting any clarity, okay, then you might have to, like they say, like the doctor says, I'm going to change the dose, okay? So we're going to give you an extra pill or I want to take you to uh, um, a stronger pill. You see what I'm saying? So now let me check to see what's the best what's the best recipe I need to give. See, I'm asking my cause right now to show me what it is that I need to do with her. Now, I might have a different spread except uh, instead of going doing all three in seven rows. Now, if I wanted to, I can do a pyramid, okay? It's all up to you. Guys hear that thunder out there? Wow. You see, when I said the blockbuster, when I said the clarity and stuff like that, do you see the answer that I got here? It's gonna be successful. This is what's gonna remedy the situation. Oh, I know. Oh god. Sorry guys, sorry. Um, my thoughts exactly, okay? I wanted to know if I should stick to the recipe that I had or if I need to come up with another one. You see what I'm saying? So right now, like I said, the blockbuster, the white candle, it's gonna be a successful um, um, job for me to do. It's gonna do what it needs to do for her, okay? Now, once you got the approval from that, now you have to see if this person needs to go home with it or do they need to leave it here. If this, if this person needs to leave this work here for me to continue to, um, for me to continue to, um, Charge it for her on a daily basis, you know, say prayer over it, say song, whatever the case may be. Or is this something that she's going to be able to do on her own? So now I'm going to, I asked another question. So let me see what goes on. You see what I was telling you that you figure out what you're supposed to do. You see, if I do only red as far as that is give me my yes or my no. Or do I have to look at what it is that needs to be exactly done as, it's to, as far as what the action is telling me? My action was, do I need to let her go home with this or is this something that she needs me to do here? Just here, okay? I got my five of diamond. I got my four of diamond they, and my three of club. Nevertheless, this message right here because this doesn't represent anybody that she knows. This represents to me that she's going to have dreams, okay? And she, she may need to leave it here, okay, at the moment. And she needs to give me a call, okay, to let me know how, what dreams did she have, if she, if she did have any, what, what is her overall thoughts, how, did, how she's been feeling, what all going on. Okay, did she figure out that she needed to go to um, counseling to speak to somebody? All this uh, says a part in it, okay? My four of diamonds and stuff like that, not only that it represents for me is a bank, but at this moment right now, it's talking to me as some type of, she needs to inherit her stability. She needs to inherit what it is that she wants 
from this particular job that we're doing. Okay? And of course, the five of diamonds, it shows the success of it. It shows that it's going to help not just her, but her family. Okay? In her home. Because the five of diamonds is also news about a child. Okay? But if you cross over and you do it all together, you're going to see exactly how it all makes sense. Now, if I wanted to, and I didn't want to break it down this way, I didn't have to. I could do it another way, okay? But this lets me know right here that it's going to be a success for her to do it exactly how I said for her to do it, okay? So, and then you got completion numbers right here, these two tens, and then you got five plus four, that's nine, okay? Something that she needs to do to wrap everything up for her to get to the next step. That's how you start connecting it. Now, if you don't want to do it this way, you could also do it like this to yourself. You can always think about your prescription. Think about what it is that you want to do for this person. Okay? And then now, since he's in my hand, I'm not going to shuffle it. Okay? I'm not going to shuffle it. I'm going to just go like this because he's in my hand. And then I'm going to do another way. Okay? I wanted to give her a clarity candle. I wanted to give her a blockbuster candle. Let me see. I already got my yes from my last breath. Let me see if it's going to be a successful outcome using this method that I'm going to do. Okay, now I'm going to be looking for my aces, okay, to see, am I going to have a very big outcome with the job? Is there going to be another one that I have to put an extra to the job? Or if the job exactly is that it is the prescription that I have for, it's going to completely work out for her, okay? So you saw how I did it the first time when I did all my reds to my black, not only that, and I broke the meanings down to each other to make it fit. And then you saw a lot of energy, a lot of positive energy, because remember, once again, not only that uh, diamonds mean energy, cash, and stuff like that, it also means is successes. What's the outcome of this situation, okay? So let me see how many aces I got. That's one so far. Yes. That's two. It's going to be great. See? Great. Okay? So it's the same thing that I, want, I got before. I got the same one here. Okay? So th these are ways that you can check it. Now, of course, let's say, for instance, you, just don't, you don't want to use your aces. Let's say for you want to use your tens because remember tens is completion, tens is uh you know success and all that other kind of stuff. So let's just say because what you gotta do is you gotta remember the once you shuffle those cards, okay? Whether you're looking for aces, whether you want to use sevens, one whether you want to use tens, it's all up into what you want to use at the time. Once you shuffle the card on that, you cannot go any further. Meaning that you can't make the card shuffle to fit what you want it to fit. That's wrong. Okay? So you see, I'm already saying that right now I'm going to use my tens. Okay? To see how successful the work is going to be over the prescription that I um, subscribe to her. Okay? What's going to be my outcome with it? Now that's the third time I'm asking the question. But like you just seen, that's not going to happen for you if you do it with the client here. 
It's not going to happen because you already did it the first time. Or you could have did the, the, the way you answered the question the second time. It's all up to the way you do it. But you just have to remember that once you, you know your goal, you have to keep it that way. You can't change it and say, oh, let's see how many tens. Or, oh, let's see how many sevens. Or, oh, let's see how many aces. Once you got your mind there, you can't change it as you go. That's very important to know. Once again, like I said, everybody does things different. My way may not be your way or you don't like my way. Or you could say, oh, wow, I like his way. It's all up to you. But you can't sit there and say that what I'm doing is wrong because you're not aware of it. You can't do that. That's not like one reader is leaning on the other or this is a group thing where everybody's interested in how everybody knows their stuff. Now I'm going to do tens. I want to see how this situation is going to be with just using tens, okay? So I'm going to count out my 13. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 13. I'm going to tell you another thing behind 13 too. 13, if you go and you add 1 plus 3, that gives you 4. The outcome, you're trying to figure out what the stability is going to be over the recipe that you prescribe to that client or that spiritual work that you prescribe to that client. It's going to show you the outcome of it to give it that stability, meaning that foundation to be able to give that completion to the work. Okay? Or you could just see 13 as a number for you that, like in certain cultures, these type of numbers, they're spiritual numbers, okay? So it all depends on what you know where you learned, okay? So let's see. We said 10, right? Okay. I got one. Okay, I only had one, so that means that it's not going to be bad, it's not going to be good. The outcome is going to be, mm, okay, you see what I'm saying? So now, if I want to try to figure out why it did that, let me see if it'll tell me, because now this would be considered the second attempt, okay? It's going to let me know, is there things that's going on that she needs to do before? Is it that I need to start her off with a higher um, dose before I give her to tell her to just go home with her candle. It all depends. But once it, remember, once again, I already asked my question and I already checked it with three, two different sets. That's already too much. But I'm just showing you what happens when you finish it off, where you got to get your con confirmation. Okay. The only reason why I'm doing like this is because he's in my hand. He's shaking like a vibrator because it's storming out there. You're scared? You're scared? Sometimes you'll get somebody that'll say, Oh, I, that reading that you're doing, that has nothing in connection with me. Really? Let's close the deck and shuffle it again. <laughs> I promise you, the reading is going to fall back down the same way. Because that's that person's energy that's being um, um, dealt with. That person's mind, that person's problems connected into that card, into the deck of cards. And nevertheless, she's the one that's dealing with the um, results. She's talking, she's telling me. What's going on with this person? Not only through the cards, but she's whispering to me as well. That's why you got to be able to know how to do the cards uh, in a couple of different ways. Because if you don't, you may not be able to help everybody or give somebody a clear reading. Okay, so now I got to see, is we did we get a weak yes because of some obstacles? 
Okay, because now this is my second time doing this. So this is going to let me know what all, you know, is she has to do. See? No tens. No tens. So... That lets me know that she has a lot of stuff that's blocked. It's going to block this situation from us doing this job. So we're not going to be able to start out with just two simple um, candles. You understand what I'm saying? And then it's just going to help her. This would have told me that we need to do a couple of things before she will get to that point that she needs to get to. But then I got to figure out, is it going to, is it have to be, more than seven days is it going to be more than 13 days is it going to be more than 21 days where am i going to know so now i have to ask the cards that which how many time how many days how many candles it, all that stuff is in there what herbs i'm going to be able to know by me thinking about the herbs that i already have lined up are those the um the um the specific herbs and stuff that needs to be done you got to start off low in order to get off high. Sometimes you got to start off high so that you to get it done. But you got to consult your cards, okay? If you don't use cards to do your um, readings and you use water or you use shells or bones, whatever it is, you got to be able to figure out what it is that you have to do, okay? You may even have to ask, is there a particular saint or a spirit that this person needs to get this help from? It is is Jewish going to be able to take care of it? Is Saint Expedite going to be able to take care of it? So now I may have to take my Saint Expedite out, okay, and, and see if it's for him to do the job. These are things that you already have to know before you consult your cards. This is how you get your yeses and your noes, and this is how you're able to say, okay, what is it that I actually need to do? That's when you know you're able to do a spread and see where it is you got to go through there. It, this takes a lot of experience. It takes a lot of know-how. It takes a lot of focus because you got to be able to do this because you said you wanted to do this professionally. You said that this is what you were destined to do. So you have to make this make sense to you way before you're able to detail it for your client. That's why you have to practice. That's why you have to know your stuff. Especially before you take people's money. Don't tell people stuff that you know that you ain't going to be able to back up. Let's see if we should use St. Expedite. Let's see if we should use St. Expedite. Where's my St. Expedite? Okay, let's see if we, let's use the King of Spades as our St. Expedite, okay? Now, let's see if that he's going to be the one that's going to be need to work with, or he's going to be the one that's not going to be for him to work with to help us, okay? Now we're looking for aces to give us that um, answer for the yes and to the no, okay?
Now, we didn't say tens, we said aces. Okay, we got a weak yes. Okay, it wasn't a great um, yes, like definitely. Okay, so now see if we would have used tens, you see how we would have had it. We would have had yes, go ahead and do it. It's going to be great. But we didn't have, we didn't say tens, we did aces. Okay, so that's how you have to do it. You have to already know what card you're going to do to figure out if St. Expedite is going to be the one to help. So now we know that St. Expedite is not going to be able to help us. Let's see if we should use Jewish to do it. You got to already know what these spirits, what kind of work they do, what kind of work they don't do. You know what I'm saying? What, what herbs works under the particular saint? You know, what element? If that element, if that spirit lives in the fire, if in the earth, or if in the water, wherever that, you'll be able to know elemental. Then you'll know um, astrology wise because you'll know what spirit it is as far as their zodiac sign. That's what I'm saying to you. you these kind of things, they all going to come up and you're going to be able to know exactly how to do it once you're confronted with it. Now, let me see where's my Jewish at. I say, for instance, I did. I use Jewish, and no matter what I do, okay, I just use Jewish. And certain things, Jewish, it's not her particular, you know, thing. Especially when it has to do with works that needs to be done. Like, for instance, with the gede. But the gede, you gotta know. Once you do that, nigga, that gede, you gotta already know that this is how the gede works, and this is how the gede wants to. That's the prescription. That, that Gede focuses on. So once you know you work with the Gede, you got to know what herbs you use for uh, cleansings with the Gede, what type of positive stuff you do with the Gede. You see what I'm saying? These are things that you already got to know. That's why you always need to know your backstory, your basics, before you go all the way up to... Um, Or I couldn't have not took out the Jewish. I could have just let it stay in. And if she came up while we was doing it, we would have checked for Jewish. Then we would have checked to see if the aces was with her. You see what I'm saying? You got a choice. You just have to talk to the cards and tell the cards that you need to know who and what needs to be done. Now we know that Fuera. She works with, you know, prosperity. She works with love and stuff like that. So for this particular job, we don't need Freda because we're not working on anything with love or prosperity. We're trying to figure out how to give this person clarity and to break down some obstacles that they're facing with. Okay, so that's what you got to remember. You got to always remember what you ask the cards, not what you want to make it fit at the time. Okay, so we're going to see if Jehuj is going to be the one that we need to do this work with. Or do we need to do it with somebody else? What, is, what it is you got to do is you got to identify what spirits or saints that you work with. And once you see what type of job that needs to be done, you can use Jehuj or you could use St. Expedite. But you got to make sure that these is what these specialties that these particular saints or lois are working with. See what I'm saying? So that's that's exactly because if I used her again, if I did it again, that it's gonna tell me that you know there's gonna be some obstacles before. So now I need to say, okay. 
Is this something that doesn't have anything to do with these particular spirits and you're just doing it from a particular, like a job or just something candle that would require just prayer or just psalms, not identified with any other spirits. You just doing a simple little work where this person needs to get their confirmations and stuff, okay? So right now we tried Saint Expedite, we tried Jewish. It didn't work for us. We got a weak yes with the with the Saint Expedite, okay? So let's see now. Now I'm gonna just see if this, we just need the blockbuster candle, just like that, just charged, and then go from there. Or is, do we need a, the strength of a saint or a spirit? Okay, so. We did Jewish, we did Saint Expedite, it didn't work out for us. Now, let me see about Saint Clair. Oh no, not Saint Clair. Let me just see if this is something that just needs to be done without the invocation of these spirits or the saints. Okay? So is this something that just needs to be charged with just psalms or just prayers or both? Okay? So This is probably one of the longest videos that I done posted here yet. But I just wanted to show you how I do certain things to see exactly where I come from with them. And then I didn't even really uh, stick to the lesson that I had planned for you guys. And I took out all the notes that I have. And then I didn't even um, do it. So, let me see. Remember, this is just for uh, Psalm and uh, Prayer. For... Oasis. You see that? So now, what is it that I have to figure out to do is as to why um, now we have to go and see that if this person's going to need bath. You see what I'm saying? Along with the candle work. You see? Because this so far, this person is, the, the obstacles and stuff like that is not doing it for them. You see what I'm saying? So now I need to see if she needs to do a bath with the work. This is how you get to know all these things. You do. Now, is this person going to need a black um, hen in order to be cleansed off? Is it, is it that, is it, is it just the severity of it that I'm going to have to add a bird to the work? See what I'm saying to you? So it all depends on what all is going on. But to tell you the truth, there was a lot of dark cards in that, a lot. I usually don't like to shuffle like this because we're not playing cards. But I need these cards to now remember this question right here is do we have to add a bird to the work along with the bath along with the candle work
Now I got to make sure that Okay, so yes, we could use a bird. We could use a bird. Okay, now once I use the bird, okay, am I going to get the um, results that it is that I need to, to see if this is going to help her? Sometimes the cards too, they get tired. You got to remember that. And then of course, I didn't do my candle. I didn't do... Okay, so I'm just working just with myself now. So I need to make sure that after the bird, is she going to be okay? When you shuffle this like that too, it, it, it takes out that stiffness out of the cards. Okay. I do the sign of the cross. Above them, I shake my little bell and then of course, like I told you, we, we in a setting, but, you know, I'm doing this clear eye, which means cold. So we got to see. Remember I told you if this is going to help her when she's done. So far, we got a yes. Now let's see if it's going to be great. See? It's going to be great. It's going to be excellent. Okay? So, do you see now how the system, you know, can work? How you do this when you consult, when you define? You see what I'm saying? And that's just me doing it just like that. Okay? I don't have the aid of the kid. I don't have the aid of, you know, she was in my ear and all this other kind of stuff. It wasn't, you know. But this is what I'm trying to tell you that this is how... You break certain things down. You have to know your stuff, okay? Regardless, you have to know what you have to do. And you got to consult with the card to make sure that it's properly done. Now, when I do the bath, I know I'm going to use the bird. I still got to do the uh, cut the candle. Or can I just make do the bird bath and then just do the blockbuster? Uh, that's going to be the blockbuster. And then light her up a clarity lamp or a clarity thing. We already got those answers, so now I know that this is going to be my outcome once I've already prescribed what it is that I prescribed, what it is that I knew I needed to do. Now that's when you follow your recipe to say, okay, I need ne uh, negative herbs that remove negative um, energy, okay? So that's where you would have your rue, you would have your um, hyssop, you would have your, um, your basil. You can have your um, your your salt. You can have your sour orange. You can have your limes. You can you see all those stuff is in there, you know. So once you know your recipes, you gotta see what it is that's gonna be able to help that person. Now that's just of course 
not taking any of the other cards into consideration because remember what I said, once you ask the cards what you need to ask the card and you already say that you're doing it with the aces as your yes or no, that's how you get your um, answer to what it is that you need to do. Okay, so if you would have known, if you would have said, okay, well, this is, you can't ask the card the same question and wait for another answer. You got to ask it to go with it. You see what I'm saying? So now you got the block, the blockbuster candle. You got the clarity candle. You got the bath. Now you added a bird to the bath and your outcome was great. Okay, after all that was done. Now... Once that is all done and you got that, that's it. You don't need to ask anything else. You know where to go from there. You give the client what it is that the client's going to need to know what they have to have as far as their clothes coming where they're going to have to uh, be parted with those clothes and all that other kind of stuff. This is the ritual side of it, okay? This has nothing to do it with the cards. Because the cards was to see what type of work that needs to be done to be able to get this person on the straight and narrow. Okay? It's already almost two hours uh, with you guys. And the reason why I wanted to do this as well, too, is not only to get my point across as far as what I was discussing earlier, but it's just the ways to show you how us diviners, us readers, how we break our cards down in a way to be able to get our yes and no. Or exactly what it is I know. And like I said, if you're just a regular card reader and you don't do it like this and you don't give prescriptions, you don't prescribe anything so the clients will say that, then you don't even have to go that far. You see what I'm saying? Because if you're not a priest or priestess, you have no reason to go into those type of things and ask in the cards those type of questions. You see what I'm saying? So it's all about staying in your lane. Make sure that when you're telling that client, okay, this is how you get your yes and no's and stuff like that. You don't do like how, um, you don't have to tell them exactly, oh, I do reds to black red. No, you just tell them you know how to get your answers. And that's all you need to know. Now, let's say, for instance, I want to say, okay, I wanted to add a bottle of perfume to that. As far as when I done strip of her, I done do her candles just to give her something that she could put on herself to keep her from getting any of that stuff back and all this other kind of stuff. You just add it to the work and then you see how is it going to be able to be helpful. Do you need to do it or do you not need to do it? This is what you're going to see. So once you do that, you ask the card again. Great. Okay, you see? Great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See? Great. Great. Now, let's say for instance, I wanted to do color code. is to see what's red to the black to see how high. Let's go like that. And if you see all the cards, that's mostly here, that's a uh, heart. This is for her, her well-being. You see what I'm saying? This is for her to be able to be emotionally stable in her situation after all the stuff that she done did. Okay? So, you got that. So, now we only got one, two. Now, we already did our aces. So, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See, if you was to do red or the black, then um, that's what you would get opposed to your aces. Now, let's say, for instance, if you wanted to do high numbers or low numbers, you got this right here, your nine, or just seven, your nine. See, the rest of these are low. Okay, oh, you could do your six as well. So you got nine plus nine, that's 18. 18 plus seven is 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and then 6, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay? Changes and movements. You see what I'm saying? This is the changes that this person is going to be going through. These are the type of work. These are the, all these steps that she had to do to make sure that she acted out on it so that she can get that comfort. 
to get to her and strip her of all these things that she got going on with her. You see what I'm saying? So either or, you're going to get your answers once you know your rituals, once you know what it is that you need to add to it, subscribe to it, you're going to be able to do that. And this is the best way to try to do it because you got something else that you're channeling to be able to give you your um, result. Nevertheless, the participation of the spirit, okay? This is how I would know what it is I have to do for somebody. You guys have a great day. Thank you for watching. I hope that you get some clarity. I hope that you study. I hope that you get whatever it is that you get from my videos, from the way I've taught you guys everything okay send me a message let me know how you feel let me know what's positive let me tell you what's negative but please don't go based on how my room is and all this other kind of stuff because i'm not here to try to offend somebody to try to be discriminatory or anything like that i'm just doing me okay remember that god's image is what the image of the human being okay guys have a great day see you soon bye